Ravi here to help you with the cello, and today I'll be talking about long tones. The most basic and maybe elemental way of practicing, um, starting with open strings. Let's just say that you are starting your practice session for the day, uh, or you're beginning on the instrument, uh, like beginning, beginning the instrument. Uh, you want to uncomplicate things and make a great sound on the instrument. Well, that's what you do. You just try to figure out, uh, based upon what you have learned on your bow hold and so forth. I'm going to hold the bow like I normally do, not like a beginner bow hold, and um, which might be something more like this. But I'm going to go to my bow hold here. I have a five-step bow hold video as well. But I'm going to try to get a sort of into the instrument and I'm going to play a couple beats per bow. I add this kind of playing to scales. I ask all of my students to learn scales like this for the first three octaves and even learning the four octave scale, fourth octave, before we go to add speed and so forth because I I tend to favor sound production over speed. Speed tends to make us more withdrawn and going for notes. And I think that sound is more important than notes. Um, uh, music is like the sound, art of sound, art of noise, basically. And we want to be musicians and we don't want to think about being noticians. So playing a nice rich sound of the instrument, regardless of whether it's a C string, string or whether it's going through shifts and pieces or etudes uh, it's all good to start off with long tones because I think it's much better to be practicing a piece on your own terms and conquering the material in any way that you can rather than struggling with it and building up bad habits. Keeping things really simple allows one to look outside of oneself as if, your own, as if you are your own teacher and you're paying attention and making commentary saying, hmm, I didn't like how I felt that last note or my, my note was off or my bow hold felt a little clenched as I was going for that last note, any number of things can happen. And when you're doing things slowly, without all of the uh, complications of rhythm and bowing and fast tempos, you don't have to worry about that. You're not just in the thick of it, you're actually able to observe more what you're doing. So long tones, I think, are a great way to either start a practice session or uh, practice more in depth, take, take a closer look at things to help you get through it rather than banging your head in the door trying to go think, do things over and over and over again, which so many, especially young musicians do. Uh, you tell them, you think, how, you think about how you practice, they go, yeah, 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 tell me about it. I mean, I do think about how I practice, but believe me, uh, I'm thinking about my younger days, even in college and graduate school, I didn't really know what I was doing. So um, anyway, whether you're a, a child or an adult or child at heart, um, it's really important to, to practice with long tones, to incorporate these in your daily routine. So we're going to start off with some open strings. And you'll notice that on the open strings, I'm going to be using different bow speeds because I choose to use the same contact point. When I choose to use the same contact point, um, every, every string really has a different kind of formula for what it needs, the weight, contact point, and speed of the bow to make a, a great sound on the instrument. To make a, a similar sound on each string, you're gonna need different speeds because they're different thicknesses, especially when considering the A compared to the C. The C is much thicker and the bow speed may only go about a third or even a quarter of the speed go on the A string. So let's try some long tones on A strings, two beats per bow, roughly 60. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, two. A nice slow pulse. 
and then we'll move to the D eventually, and then the G and the C. You can always add more beats per bow. We can add three or four per bow. But if you add too many, it starts to become a complication. It's like, well, why am I doing long toms in the first place? I'm doing them to make things easier. Um, if you want to go for, for many beats per bow, like 10 and above, that's a great exercise. And I am all for it. build up a lot by doing that. There are actually some exercises where you're just pulling in that direction. It's, it's, yes, it sounds hideous at first, or maybe it sounds hideous the whole time, but the whole point is you're just using that, that muscle group pulling in that direction for a long period of time, even a minute per bow or more per bow. Uh, and those exercises are really great, but we won't cover that here. So long tones on the A string, uh, some Hooper problems here. One, two, one, two, A string. Good for your health, right? Have a great day. Bye.